Welcome to the card table. It is a Queen of Hearts week. Um, and my name is Rashad. Cards, letter in the cards. Just guided by the cards. And Brian with the seasons, Madeline. I, I don't know if she's joining us, but she should. She did text me this morning. So she'll pop in here in a second. So Queen of Hearts week, I was saying I was going to go home, but I didn't. <laughs> Um, but so I'll probably go home next week. But I have been meaning to call some motherly figures in my life. I guess you could uh, can say that. Um, so this week has been about love, relationships, um, being hospitable, um, and you know, childbirth as well. Also has like the non club association with it. Um, which I was speaking about as far as uh, routine understanding. And sometimes we talk, uh, speak about the nine clubs as like rituals um, as well. So if you can see it's, it's right below me. So the nine clubs in this place is the tennis phase. But the reason I didn't go to work, I mean, go home this week is because of work. <laughs> oh, what kept you from going home? Yeah, I just need to make some more money. Rent yeah. is coming up. <laughs> so, yeah, in about a week or so. So, yeah, so I need to make some more money. So, I got a goal of running the make. And because I waited so long, prices went up as far as um, tickets as well. But I may catch it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, they say. So, we'll see. <laughs> it's probably cheaper to fly, like, in, you know what I mean? In the middle of the week, I would think. Mm. But I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I haven't, <laughs> I, I, I've never been very, like, I'm not a big fan of being on an airplane. I don't know what it is, but um, it's definitely a thing. I used to have to medicate myself to get on a plane. <laughs> uh, so it definitely is an experience for me. Um, but yeah, the, when's the last time I even flew? To be honest with you, I don't even remember. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> it's probably like two, four or five years ago now, I would say. I think I did a day trip to Vegas, but it was for work. It wasn't, I wasn't like playing, though I played a little bit, but because <laughs> I always play. But um, I think it was the last time I flew was that or either to Utah. I think those were, was the last trip I may have taken, I think, to be honest with you. Went on a helicopter. But that was about <laughs> and the Queen of Hearts is about travel as well. Too yeah. far Well, they have the five of clubs in Pluto too, so I think it's good for them, you know, to kind of be able to change, you know, change the scenery, get them in a different space, you know, because I think because the 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 feelings can be very intense with that energy that they almost have to kind of. Um, get away or break out, you know, to, to kind of release that. Cause sometimes it can be a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think, I believe someone, someone this week I was speaking with had a five of clubs. Um, I forgot where exactly. Let me see. I was just talking about the five of clubs last night, actually. Yeah, so, yeah, it was talking about learning, going to different places, learning from different people as far as, like, metaphysics, or metaphysical sciences, um, and learning different healing mode atoms as well. Um, and, and then another person had a five of clubs, um, and I, was, I think they had one in, like, Mars as well, um, who I was speaking with. I was just talking about he was going to school uh, and going back to school, you know, so that can open up to education as well, you know, discipline, um, <laughs> making sure that you organize it definitely has me in the Mercury. So, and then they pushed me up and I'm Mercury Uranus. So discipline, organization, you know, I'm looking at the teachers that you have as well. Um, I'm saying that in, making sure that he's satisfied as far as the teacher he may have because he may want to quit or, you know, may not want to have that type of, you know, particular teacher. Because I think the social interaction and, and being around someone that can 
you know, I wouldn't say please you mentally, but that can, um, that you can relate to almost in a way, you know. And I think too, having that, that five of clubs and no matter where you have it, whether it's your Pluto card, your Mars, your Mercury, the, it, 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 it can be a very, um, restless energy. So I think the organization, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's important too with that energy that they have to open up, you know, because there's such a, a wanderer type frequency to that, to always seeking more that I, th I wonder, and I, and I bet you the queen of hearts may be able to agree with this, that is, are you ever satisfied, mm -hmm. you know, because there's such an insatiable desire to, to have more, to seek more, is the information enough? Is that enough, you know what I mean? Or do you have to go to another level of it? You know what I mean? Like, I think there's sometimes this, cause it's such a constant spinning of the wheels at times that is there any like space for satisfaction, for space for contentment with that energy? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. Um, dissatisfaction comes with the five of clubs, five of hearts. And that's all I'm saying, even dissatisfaction with your teacher. You right. Know? Getting under a certain person that's all I'm saying, like making sure that you're under someone that you like, you know, having a certain being around a certain energy because, like you said, the dissatisfaction can come in all sorts. You know, someone can't keep your attention or you're not being able to be satisfied from the information. And then they have the Ten of Clubs and Mercury, so, um, like Ten of Clubs, and the if they're not, you know, mentally disciplined, um, that's just like one of the faults of that ten of clubs in the mercury but they're super smart so they can be super smart so they can you know be outsmart the class or just be ahead of the class in some type of way you know um or find things boring you know just you know simply find things boring and then like you said at the five of clubs of pluto you know it can probably make you very dissatisfied from looking at three or four different things at one time or people <laughs> <laughs> or people, <laughs> they, they move on to the next. <laughs> oh, you talk about the next, like, relationships. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I think you know if you don't keep the attention or the intellect for the Queen of Hearts, she she's gonna bounce, male or female. You know what I mean? There has to be some stimulation in that space that ha i mean it, it, think about the ten of clubs and mercury how big that brain is and if you're not filling that brain pff, you're gonna you're gonna they're gonna dispose of you <laughs> hold on one second i'll be right back hold on no you fine yeah so hello everyone i'm danielle uh, i know that you're queen of hearts here we have another honorary queen of hearts here so thank you all for showing up uh so was well, just speaking about the five of clubs um, and the also you also have the ace of clubs um, in your pattern as well. So um, as you can see, you have um, one, two, three, um, yeah, three clubs um, primarily, and then you have your tennis space and Neptune, which we'll speak about a little bit more. So. Yeah, so the dissatisfaction, I can see I've worked with five of clubs before, you know, and just that overall energy is kind of hard to kind of keep their attention, you know, kind of like Jen was saying, you'll be dissatisfied, dissatisfied, distracted, you know, and it's also a people-oriented part as well. So that's why I say the people factor, who you have around you and the people that influence you because you also have the nine of clubs, having the people of influence is, is very important, very like early on in life. Yeah. And we'll kind of speak about the three of hearts as well. Then let me read the comments. And Danielle was saying I want it to be enough, but I find what I want. But I find that I want more. Yeah, so that's the dissatisfaction <laughs> that can come with uh, it as well, you know. Um, the Ten of Clubs leads to big dreams, you know, always seeing further or past, you know. Um, there is also a spiritual context with the um, Queen of Hearts of being like sometimes psychic, you know, so but having a very huge imagination, you know, in that quest and search with the clubs. That's all speaking of that search and that quest with the knowledge and information. 
Person buttons and item. So that's always not feeling like you have enough uh, with the Ace of Clubs and Saturn. Um, I think earlier I had wrote um, Nick. He's gonna speak about the of what? Yes, he, he doesn't have Saturn jacket. You okay? Hold on, I'm sorry. I had to move. So, Chiron, yeah, I think like kind of like the Chiron placement in Gemini. Not saying Saturn and Chiron exactly the same, but as far as like faults and hindrances, um, maybe you're not feeling confident in certain areas sometimes. Could come in. It wouldn't hurt to so, would be great. Wow. But we're not feeling like you have enough with that ace of clubs. Thank you. Whatever you do is good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm back now. <laughs> there we go. You know, it's funny, today is, my card is actually the queen of hearts today. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, somebody said they can't hear me. Can y'all hear me well? Because I, I, I am you. on the phone. Um, I can't, I was trying to get on the laptop, but I've had all type of tech, technological issues as well. Um, I hear you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Maybe okay. like I said it was scuffling, maybe they can hear me. Yeah, I hear you now. I had to move out of where I was because my youngest daughter is leaving. So he's uh, her dad is here to get her. And I was like, I got to move because he's going through some of her stuff in her room. So I was like, let me get into my room. Mm -hmm. So anyways, but yeah, that. Um, what were you just talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was talking about the imagination and not the concept of maybe not having enough information or not feeling like it, not until you don't have enough information but their quest and thirst for knowledge come from that five of spades and pluto but also the ace of clubs uh for them uh and saturn yeah qu questioning things yeah so over questioning mm -hmm. things questioning things you know, I think, I think also though, if anytime that there's an ace in Saturn, I think you have, you know, cause their cosmic lesson is also an ace, the ace of spades. So there's this essence of trusting yourself, mm -hmm. trusting the things that come to you, trusting your own intuition, trusting your own curiosity. Cause that's a big part of the ace of clubs is, you know, looking for answers, uh, seeking some kind of knowledge. It's such an inquisitive mind. And so I think they have to be able to trust that with Saturn, they have to probably work harder to really be able to, one, be motivated, self-motivated, because I think the Queen of Hearts, you know, no offense, <laughs> there is this like very much complacent energy. Uh, I, I always jokingly say, you know, having a lot of Queen energy in your spread, you may want to be spoiled. You may want to, you know, I, I always say get fed grapes and have your feet massaged and someone blow a fan on you. <laughs> So there's this essence of uh, that, you know, energy when really do you, you know, do that for yourself and like, how, can you, can you motivate yourself without having to, to look for another to motivate you? Um, I think when they tap into that ace energy, the queen of hearts can be unstoppable because they really do see the power that they have within. But that ace of clubs and that ace of spades is, you know, the drive, the the motivation, the desire to initiate things sometimes it they 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 can get very comfortable you know that's a big part of that queen energy is a lot of comfort with that you know so they, they get comfortable or maybe stuck so they you know rather than looking for others for answers they really have all the answers within 
Yeah, um, Danielle said, so true. I do want those things, but I have to do that for myself. Um, yeah. And that's the pampering and taking care of yourself um, part is what Gina was talking about. And you think that comes maybe from the sevens as well, um, as far as like the seven of hearts and, and the moon and the three of hearts? Yeah, definitely. Because then, you you know, the three of threes will want, you know, they look outside, they look, you know, for experiences to bring them some kind of pleasure or some kind of satisfaction. The seven of hearts is, you know, that unconditional love and that has to come from within first and foremost. Um, if you're looking, you know, there's that essence of attachments and expectations and conditions with those sevens. So when you release those, and I feel like too, the queen of hearts, you know, growing up, there may have been you know, um, some kind of emotional um, challenges maybe in their younger years because that's, and so that seven of hearts, having that seven of hearts in, in the moon, the cosmic moon, there is this essence of, you know, spending their life really nurturing themselves from the inside out because they have such a big heart. They have such a big, um, it's, it's it, it, you know, being very much more aware of this energy this week, um, I see how, emotionally you can swing um i see how uh emotionally you can kind of ride that roller coaster too so they have to be grounded in that space or they can you know overgive and be attached or have expectations and there can be this disappointment in this you know so it's very important for them to you know have that solid sense of the, that love within themselves or that can get them into a lot of trouble yeah um i would say people pleaser um but getting in yeah part of the wrong crowd, also from the three of hearts. Um, but yeah, that need for the self-love uh, and definitely comes from that seven of hearts and, you know, being comfortable with ones, uh, with who you are as well. I definitely don't see them as people pleasers. And, uh, but that's probably just because they're mine, but yeah, um, <clears throat> But I don't see them as people pleasers. But I hear that ace thing and needing that confidence in what you're doing and being able to move to it with a consistency and the energy maybe not wanting to go, kind of wanting its comforts more. But that's just from my own experience more than anything else, you know. Mm. But good morning. They're Leos, right? So, yeah, they want people to please them. <laughs> <laughs> All day. Well, I be in hospital or being, um, you know, um, people that can uh, host a party, you know. They so, can host the party. Mm -hmm. so, you just seen their the birthday. queen is, she is the party shit. <laughs> when, they, when they graduated high school, they both had big rainbow scarves on and uh, on the, with their costumes that I get with their whatever costumes, grad gowns. And, you know, I thought it'd be kind of fun, but I didn't know they were the queens of the high school. <laughs> it was ridiculous how many people flocked around them. Like I could barely get to them. It's a very attractive energy. Yeah. It's a, they, they attract. They, yeah. they're really they don't even have to be aesthetically because I I I've seen that energy move in ways that it really wouldn't even matter what the person looked like aesthetically, but they had a grace. They had this charm. They had this magnetism about them that you were you're drawn to the energy very much so. Yeah, teachers were drawn. Teachers wanted to come to the house for dinner and to hang out and talk to them. They were miss them. <laughs> right? It's crazy. So, <clears throat> but I, but I did really experience a high like mother focus this week. You know, like really like a beautiful mother focus, like a loving of the mother focus. You know, like I mean, I don't want to say all the cool things that happened because I feel like I'd be bragging, but like man, I got like loved up like in so many sweet ways and. <clears throat> I will share <clears throat> how I went to my comedy improv auditions, right? So they're doing auditions to see if you can be on their team. I don't want to be on their team just yet. I, I don't really feel confident enough, but I went to the auditions because you get to do all these games and the games are so funny and the things people say are so funny. I was just hysterical. And I did it too and stuff. And I just wore such a fun outfit, you know, like gold pants, purple skirt, gold shirt type thing, like big purple hat. I totally went for like, he's talked about that other character. I was like, just bring her in there. Just go ahead, you know? 
when every skit I did, somebody turned me into their mother and I was cracking up. I was like, damn, Queen of Hearts week. I mean, besides the way I look, mm-hmm. I couldn't get over that everyone was like responding to me like a mother person. You know, they're all guys in their 30s. Forever, so it was funny. But uh, so that was my big uh, Queen of Hearts and <clears throat> softening. Lots of softening and lots of emotional acuity as far as like tuning in with compassion. I felt a little bit more aware of others this week as well. So just, there's been so many great things this week. I, I really did have a lot of fun. No, that sounds like fun. I was just talking to somebody the other day that um, they were telling me since I crack jokes and laugh all day that I need to go and audition and do a comedy show. <laughs> fun. Rashad, it's so fun. I was like, I don't know, maybe so, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like a way to move through the things that go on. And sometimes, you know, you just want to say it in a funny way. And you get to say it any way you want when you're doing that. Like, it's kind of what makes it funny. Yeah, improv is, uh, that's that's probably something I wouldn't be that good at. Even if I was to do jokes, I have to write them down. There's this comedian, <laughs> like, stand on his jokes before he says it. I think it's, like, pretty witty. <laughs> Um, talking about the ten clubs, right? But um, <laughs> yeah, I would. I probably would have to like, you know, come up with this. But that's something I would want to do once in a lifetime. That's like, you know, get over that stage fight. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. things. Well, what about that ten of clubs and Mercury? I'm thinking so much about that, right? Because I didn't understand their minds because they're like they seem like these emotionally sensitive people but they're heady cats like they're really thinking about stuff a lot well, you just said it i was thinking about this a lot there you go <laughs> that's the car that's it right there you don't gotta say nothing else and thinking okay. oh. it's, yeah. it's my so i posted um i re- i reposted the video you posted rashad yesterday and i asked people how was the queen of hearts week for them right and it's interesting i have a very good friend who's a ten of clubs in you know, she was having it. I'm like, why? I had to think about it. What is it with the Queen of Hearts? I was like, oh, it's their Mercury card. Mm-hmm. So the Ten of Clubs this week were probably like, Poof, you know? <laughs> yeah, mind blown kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Overthinking so things, like very much in their head. And like I was saying before, I had to move. Um, When it comes to like that Queen of Hearts energy, if you can't mentally stimulate them, even think about it, that not only do they have a Ten of Clubs in Mercury, but they have a Five of Clubs in Pluto. So they want the deep, dark conversations. They want to go deep. They want to get intimately, you know, screw their mind, but in a good way. <laughs> you know, like JoJo's Great Adventure, that anime stuff and all that deep stuff about, I don't know if you guys ever watched those kind of shows, but they're like anime shows and they got really into it, but they got into the philosophy behind it, the characters behind it. Like they got into it so deeply when they would talk about it. I was like, what are you guys talking about? Like that show we watch. I was like, wow. Yeah, so they also have... Queen of Clubs. Um, Uranus. Uranus. Yeah. So a lot of like metaphysical things and um, spiritual groups and those things and and those type of clubs are really good for them as well. You know, a lot of times can be like movies, you know, and arts, you know, they're really good artists. So I can see like the anime with the Queen of Clubs logic and like nerdy science things, right? With um with the Queen of Clubs, Ten of Clubs would probably be really interesting for them as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Gina. Well, remember last year, I was talking to a Queen of Hearts, and man, yeah, I remember. they talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it though. I don't, you know, I have a I have a club in Mercury too, so I'm. I mean, it's it's a fun. I like the banter, but um. Yeah, they definitely that and and they're where their mind went, you know. It, it's kind and it, it's very similar, you know, with any of those clubs in Mercury. Uh, there's that, you know, the constant need for that stimulation. Um, but I think the the that's why the Queen of Hearts you find them as teachers or, you know, Rashad saying like I could see them being like, you know, doing well with groups in a group setting because that's the ten to you know the audience and they can again they they're captivating. So they could be talking about shit, literally, and people would be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> so true. So true. So true. Because they have a way of like, you know, they'll get into it, they'll be describing it, and then they'll give you all the different points about shit that you didn't even know that there were because they'd be hitting it. I mean, you know, I was just throwing something out there, but mm-hmm. they'll make it sound probably really good too. You know what I mean? Because that's the other thing too. They kind of 
stimulate your imagination and 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 they make you I feel like too having that ten of clubs as Mercury card it, it makes you think they think big they they want to live you know in this this big place but I think that also can be the downfall too because they think everybody else may think that you know it's similar but you know they're on a whole level of their own so they can't really expect people to kind of have I think they can get frustrated with people is they, because it might not be able to keep up with them mentally because they're thinking so much and they have so much on their mind that I think there can be you know some disconnect with dealing with other people and communicating because mm -hmm. why aren't you thinking this way <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I've been really sensing them coming into this kind of stuff. So I find myself, as you're talking, being like, don't tell that story. Don't tell that story. Because <laughs> you know, there's so many things I want to affirm, but I they have my own judgments in it. Do you know what I mean? Because they're really sensitive to judgment. They're really sensitive oh, to... Oh, first, like, oh, my God. So sensitive to judgment, <laughs> like, wow. And but, yeah. but articulate about it, you know, but just once you judge them, there's like, boom, you know, so even like with people, they might be attracted to them. If they thought they were narrow-minded or judging, they had no interest in that teacher. They had no interest in learning from it. It's like they rejected it 100. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was kind of speaking about with the Ace of Clubs. I think um, rejection or insecurities or not feeling like being respected for what you may know or could possibly feeling judged as well. I was speaking about like that Chiron and Gemini, you know, was kind of like similar um, with the Ace of Clubs and Saturn as well, you know. So, uh, and also the Five of Clubs being sensitive um, about the information of people you have around you, you know. Um, or just having the right person or teacher, you know, making sure that the relationship is there uh, mentally, where you can yeah. help each other, you know. And when they are mentally, they really enjoy the friendship and the mentoring. Like, they're happy to learn from you. They're not like bullies with what they know. They love to learn. So they love to listen, too. Yeah. And I think, too, you have to be able to respect that they, you know, you can't they don't learn in a box, you know, like they're, they don't, they need experiences. Like yes. the learning is the way. Because they have, because, because again, they're such a sensitive energy. If, you know, they feel, I feel like they, when they can connect to the experience it, it deeper, you know, and I think also too, like knowing this, knowing if you have like the queen of hearts child, or if you have a, you know, the, the five of clubs, you know, in your, in, in Mercury or in Mars or, you know, that you sometimes, Le your learning style is going to be different and being open to new perspectives or being open to different ways of being taught something or being or learning something rather than just what you know society tells you um they can be very gifted mm -hmm. but if that wasn't seen in the beginning it could have been challenging to the person raising them because you're like why can't you sit still or why can't you know why aren't you able to comprehend well maybe because they needed more visual or they needed more you know, understanding that their learning skills or, or capabilities are going to be absolutely different than most because of ten of clubs in Mercury and a five of clubs in Pluto. More than five or six years old, nobody else talked at dinner. Yeah, the two of them talked the whole time. <laughs> their older brothers would get so mad. They're like, why do they talk all the time? Why don't they let anyone else talk? I'm like, they've been waiting for dinner. Like they had a lot to say. And it's so funny because you, you can you can definitely contribute the Queen of Hearts to eating. <laughs> yeah, like eat and talk. It was like heaven. It's like, ah, I'm, 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 yeah. it was like, the days. it's like a four hour <laughs> dinner too, I bet. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Because you're talking, your food's get like you're not even really how are you eating this? You know what I mean? So yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, they would get into little tips over this and that, but like they would just keep it going, like you know. And when they have their friends over, you know, they're the guys who have the poker game and then this and then mm -hmm. that. And, and it's kind of fun because if you are sincere, they don't care how quirky you are. And some quirky cats made their way to them, and they're they're fine with quirky as long as you're sincere. Yeah, I think that comes. That's what I was saying from the three parts, just being careful because they can nudge a lot of different people, and it's like a nun. Um, discretion it's like not, not discriminatory you know so they have people from all walks of life that come within their life you know with all so uh, I think I was just speaking with about that card with someone last night 
and about the three of hearts, but another three of hearts, you know, that what, but what comes with it, you know, is also understand that people come and they go, you know, within your life. So you make friends and associates and you may not speak with them for ages, but, you know, may see them again. So you still have that same friendly nature and also have the same friendly nature. Even if they have disputes, you know, with friends or family, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that same attitude of, of trying to be happy or smile their way through it. Yeah, they don't stay mad. One to stay mad for a little bit, but like they have these tips with their each other or their friends. But once it's over, they let it go over, then it's over. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're, they're, I don't find them to be lingering on it. But again, I only know them in the role of being their mother. So I don't really know the other way. Who's to say? But uh, they're, they're real, real popular people. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I got to be careful because you know, their audience is growing. <laughs> yeah. One day, no, it's just an experience. So everything's positive, you know, um, within the energy and, the, and whatever we speak about, what relates, what doesn't, you know. Um, the, like we said earlier, there's different signs, you know, um, and not to say that all of them are or could, could be people pleaser if you do find yourself, but it can come from a sense of just compassion, passion for people. Um, they say the, the Queen of Hearts actually treat this as good as the Queen of Clubs, but I, I don't know. I beg to um, differ. I've, I've seen some Queen of Clubs, you know, have um, they sit in Mars, Mercury, so that um, impatience, you know, are also demanding, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know, impatience, maybe demanding. Um, that don't have a short um, have a short temper for people who just aren't on their level as far as mentally sometimes right. you know so that that's where it comes from <laughs> um, but <laughs> to be militant as well maybe you associate with the government military you know so you know so you can have those different people in different um, astrological signs or placements, you know, that may come out a little different in certain ways as well. But overall, the sociability of the Queen of Hearts, you know, even not to say that all of them drink, you know, or have a drinking problem, <laughs> you know, but just being social, having fun, being the life of a party and just being jolly in some type of way. Well, know. they like to, I think there's this essence of they like to entertain. They like to cook for people. They, you know, they like to nurture others, and that, and it can show up in multiple different ways, right? It can be cooking for them, doing their laundry, you know, the mothering energy, and that that can again show up in in many different spaces. Then you add the fact that they have the Queen of Clubs, isn't? And today's a Queen of Clubs day, right? So, and yeah, I think today, yeah, it's because it's um uh, someone's birthday, I know, and um. And then uh, in the Queen of Hearts week. And it's funny, I've actually personally in my own spread had all four queens this week. Yeah. <laughs> the way she just turned your head. <laughs> Did you get any massages? Like, what's going on, Gina? How'd you work it? No, I, 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 in the beginning of the week, I was really crabby. Like, I was like, whoa. Well, oh, you went I, bathing suit shopping. I'm a whole bitch. No, 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 no. That was last <clears> week. <throat> so in my, in my own energy, you know? But I was real. I was like, dang, you are just... Whoa, so like take it easy here. <laughs> Cause I was mm-hmm. like, whoa, what's going on? And then I was like, okay, let me, let me. And I think too, with all that queen energy, really working on that mothering and nurturing myself, you know, because I tend to, and I think there was some frustration with the kids and 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 whatnot. But as the week went through and I started to really just sit with the energy, I was like, okay, you know, there is this essence of having to nurture, having to mother and 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 not be so just there is there can be some impatience with all of them um but foot tapping i call it foot tapping like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay you can stop tapping your foot and you can mm-hmm. take strikes because i'm not coming anytime soon mm-hmm. you know like it's kind of like let's go let's go let's go you know danielle says a few people got off with their heads this week yeah I mean, i'm telling you happening right now with all relationships i wonder how that is happening that's a good go ahead gina no, and I, I I was literally like, man, F. <laughs> it was like off with your head type energy. Like, I don't want to be bothered with this no more. With you, mm-hmm. with you, with you, with you, like. <laughs> yeah, I had wrote 
earlier, um, I know Nick refers to Mother Dearest as a lot, you know. <laughs> I believe that's the movie. I've never seen it, but way Mommy described. Dearest. It's called Mommy Dearest. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. he describes he that diamonds, who has also the Queen of Hearts and the Moon, you know, so that that short tempered and the Queen of Hearts has the um, King of Spades and Mars, you know, so the demanding part, right? I think she this I can be both the many and the patient. Okay. Yes. The the accountability there. Look at it. let's let's clap. No, but but that's it, you know that's dope. Like because you you've I felt I, I'm not a queen of hearts, but I could I felt every bit of that energy this week. And then I add the fact that I have literally every, all four queens in my spread this week. I literally my card today is the Queen of Hearts. And I, I didn't get out of bed until like <laughs> I didn't get out of bed till like 10 a.m. this morning. And I was like, dang, we gotta do the YouTube. I'm just waking up. Like I am like, oh I went in me and the little one went skating last night. So that was really fun. Because that's the thing too, you know, doing fun things is a you know, with your kid like it is it is a very playful, fun energy when it when it is on its highest, you know. And I did I I've cooked more, I would say. Oh, also went to the market yesterday and came home with a whole box of like muffins and cookies. <laughs> so I was like, this is such a queen of hearts energy. I don't even eat this stuff on a regular, but I had muffins and cookies and I ate a pint of ice cream this week. I, and ice cream does not <laughs> like me. So I was really, and, and that, so to the energy, it, it's an indulging, right? Like it's an indulging. Yeah, experiential, and, right? Experiential. Right. The right. Really and it can be with it. anything. It can be food. It can be intimacy. It can be gambling. Mm -hmm. It can be shopping. Whatever gets your feels riled up, whatever tingles you, you're like, Ooh, let me do this. <laughs> you know, so that it's a big part of that energy, but, and, and it's trusting those that, cause it's, it's Neptune, Neptune. So it can be so like, just, beyond the realm and 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 I find because I'm very Neptunian too that there's a lot of delusion that comes with that as well. So I think the you have to find some kind of grounding uh with that energy or you can really get lost in the sauce. Well I think the fact that I talked about energy their whole lives and tried to give it big picture keeps it very grounded because they definitely didn't want to agree with me at all. You know, so they definitely didn't want to be buying into that ridiculousness. All you ever talk about is energy, mom, and frequency. Like, what are we even talking about? But if they're paying attention right now, they're going to have to have a little coming to the maker because that's what's true. So I hope that all the young people tap into this stuff because one of the things I noticed in being in this, like, you know, what do you want to call it? Uh, that spiritual world or people trying new things kind of stuff. You know, I know it has different words, metaphysical, whatever, right? When I opened up the center like almost 20 years ago and I was in that field, so many people my age and younger or a little older even were coming in with these new ideas about light, about color, about frequency, about music. And people were like, oh, I don't know about that. But, you know, people were coming out of curiosity and now they're like standing strong with like trees of like history of why this works and what they've seen. Do you know what I mean? So those are the parents of some of the children that probably heard those things and rolled their eyes. Right. But in mm -hmm. truth, like us coming together with what you know and what we kind of sensed, because you might innately know it even better than us as young people. Right. You might have a whether you pick up a crystal and you can feel all sorts of things that we didn't even know we could ex understand and feel because we got, you know, a different imprint or programming, right? So I think about that, like all the young people, not just my own, like to kind of not project onto their family members, the older ones, how they're annoying or stupid or always talking about dumb stuff because we're not doing the like daily feed of TikTok and, and sharing it with each other, you know, that we're considering other things, maybe bigger picture things. Do you know what I mean? And I don't mean that to shame TikTok or shame any way of time, but I, I know that there's a good amount of scrolling going on, right? Mm -hmm. I, and I know how hard it is not to. I don't do it, but people send me stuff. And when they send me the one, then another one comes and I have to stop, like stop it. Cause I, I have spent a half hour on it, not knowing. But, and that's the thing, what we can segue to is the queen of hearts is probably one of the uh, strongest cards of addictions because of the Neptune, Neptune energy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that escapism, escaping the feels, you know, the feels can be, I mean, listen, as a jack of hearts and then the queen of hearts being my higher personality, gosh, dog, it's, 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 and so I, you know, 
they're, so they're what do you mean? Like you mean like you feel it more, or like it hurts deeper, like because I it's mean, it's intense. I, I, you know, I've I've learned that a lot of times it's not even your own feel. Like I was telling somebody the other day, I have I'm very I'm sensitive, right? I can't like um like hunting or I remember when I worked in a, in kitchens, right? I worked with chefs, and if there was ever like a pig that they were, I remember there was one time they were doing like a class on the pig. And they had a whole pig in the kitchen. I couldn't go in the kitchen. I couldn't look at it. I can't look at its eyes. I refused to go into the kitchen because I could feel the pig. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. I know I sound like a weirdo, but it is. No, what no, no. I, I understand. You have that deep of a sensitivity in your relationship. No, I didn't see it with like pigs in restaurants, but right. with our animals, <laughs> with our animals and the boys and stuff yeah. like that. They this is a sure. West way I could subscribe. You know, no, 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 no. They were very much in tune. And, you know, me being a more aloof and, you know, sarcastic, callous, stoic <laughs> 1964 girl, they definitely softened me. Like, well, mom, did you ever think it was like this? Or did you see this? I'd be like, oh, God, no, I didn't. I totally didn't. So it can get over, like, so seeing that animal there will actually, like, it's like almost I experienced the death for the pig. Does that make sense? Like it was dead yeah. and being hacked yeah. and I'm not like- You should be an actress. It really, I swear, I think all you Leos should be an acting. <laughs> you know, like I feel like that's the way to do it. Cause like, cause it's, it's so true that different people respond to emotion. Cause sometimes it's fun to be dramatic about it. And be like, oh my God, like even those like anime shows and ladies show their emotions. It's like, whoa, you know? And I, and I feel like some people, it helps them move it through when they can be dramatic about it. Yeah, it's it was over. I remember I wouldn't go. I was very dramatic about not going in that kitchen. I refused. I, I actually well, couldn't once work. Once you get stubborn, that's not drama. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, hello. I'm a fixed card. So I mean, Once she says no, she said no. It like, makes sense. It. I'm not going in this kitchen because, one, it's the pig is looking at me, and I can't take that. Like, it was too Right, the real question is, did you dream about the pig? Were you able to let the pig go? <laughs> but it's not just the pigs. It's everything. Like if I see a dead animal on the side of the road or something happens to a child, oh my God, I'm a wreck. I'm an absolute wreck. I remember like when my, you know, with my daughter playing AAU, we would be traveling a lot. If another person's kid who I don't even know got hurt, I could, like, I would start to cry. They're not even my kid. So, you know, we were just talking about that. Sensitive. On, you know, that job I took with the adolescents and stuff, working at a residential program, we had a parent weekend and I did a class called Family Alchemy. I didn't break in the cards, but I did talk a lot about energy and colors and stuff. And I will get to the cards. But one of the things I was saying to the girls and her face really was just like, just, oh, I'm empathic. I'm empathic. I think I said, Leo, that's a big thing when you're empathic. And she's like, you know, why? I said, well, because you now have to learn how to discern you and the other. Mm -hmm. Like that's part of your classroom of life, mm -hmm. right? Because empathic doesn't mean I'll take on everyone's emotions and digest them and like, you know, mm -hmm. lock myself in a house with donuts. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> not it. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to process and identify what's me and what's you and speak to it, but keep a boundary. Like we get very porous sometimes when we're empathic. Mm -hmm. Mainly what I've learned from being empathic is it would be juice sometimes to keep me going. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you get a little rush from like, who said, what are you kidding me in the back room? What do you mean? Like that kind of stuff. And then you're like, I'm going to go see what's happening. <laughs> but meanwhile, it's like, you're in emotion, right? Like, you're in the caught up emotion, you're in the shared emotion. So to be empathic is a specific classroom to discern. Yeah. Like your heart frequency needs to discern, is this happening to me or around me? Right. Is this in the toric field of what I'm experiencing or is this coming from the center line of who I am and information I need to consider right now? Yeah. And I think that's a really hard part to, to discern. Well, and by then they become Addicted, know, yeah, susceptible yeah, to skin. anything that takes them away from that. Because if you don't know how to regulate that, if you don't know how to discern that it's not your shit, it you will then you know be, be, abuse it's anything to help it's you. Too much, yeah, mm -hmm. it's too much. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even working in like rehabs, like full time and being there every day, even if I was not using words to say instead, just in the energetic field of the entire building, there was a weight in that joint. Do you know what I mean? Like it was heavy. 
yeah. stories were heavy. People's experiences were sad. You know, so yeah. I mean, like to be in the heaviness and the sadness and to stay bright, you got to make sure you know what's yours. Otherwise, you know, you're just like grabbing who you can along the way, making a joke or this or that or eating the chocolate on the counter. But you're not necessarily keeping yourself clear and true because you're in a vortex of emotion. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I remember when um, my a friend of mine, she was, this was a long time ago, when right out of high school, she wanted to go into being like a paramedic or something, a firefighter. And she was telling me about going on the rides with them. And she said the hardest thing were the kids, you know, going on a ride where any kind of, you know, trauma or anything was happening with the child. And I was like, oh my God, I would go to jail because I would take them all. <laughs> I would take the kids. <laughs> with me and, and you know and they're not even my kids and I'm trying to like so realize even back then like I had this like I'm gonna say I would have to save these kids you know type energy from their abusive parents or family or whatever was going on that I realized that would not be a, a, a profession that would be good for me you know and I was really into psychology I actually wanted to study long, but when I was in high school I wanted to get in the FBI and study serial killers I was fascinated by them and then I, so the switched, is, am I going to be one or am I going right, to study? Right, basically. <laughs> right. So <laughs> I thought they were genius, actually. <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. Yeah. Um, but I then switched, you know, my major, my studies into child behavioral science because I really saw that a lot of it, you know, how they got to this being this adult is stemmed in their childhood. And I wanted to know more. So I started to work with kids. I started studying children. I worked in daycares. But I realized, like, when it came to like, I couldn't, I couldn't separate myself. Like I had a hard, it was really hard to read about child, you know, all this trauma and stuff like that. So I realized this is not my space. And then you know, I ended up being in the bar business and still kind of a psychology, but just to drunk adults, which was a lot easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You didn't want to take them. I couldn't get emotional. I couldn't them. know. I, yeah. I didn't want to say. They you. Smell I could, it. It's right. And I, I could talk shit with you. You know what I mean? Like I could, yeah. I was really good at that. But I had no desire to like to is I looked at it as okay, this is a way to still be helpful, still be in a space of kind of like because you are a psychologist, because especially if you worked at like a day bar and met, you know, men coming in sitting there all day, um, you end up talking to them. And so there was that, but I didn't you're a grown ass man, I don't gotta save you. <laughs> but them kids, oh my God. <laughs> like, forget about it. Here I come. Da -da -da -da. So <laughs> I didn't need to go like I would, I would, I remember even with my niece at one point in time, I was trying to like save her from the situation she was in. And again, the kids and the animals, you will, I'm, I'm a big sucker. So, and I, I, so those, I, are distractions. I those are your distractions. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I think one of the things from studying psychology and being a bartender, because this self-reflection analyzing stuff, this was just my personality my whole life. This has nothing to do with being a therapist. I like to consider and reflect on things, right? I really found that in that experience of doing that, there was a section where I had every diagnosis in the book. You know, I thought I was all the different things. I think that's part of the discernment is like, you temporarily kind of like wear it to grow a compassion or an awareness for it, right? Because it slows you down. So like if somebody's in an accident, you know, you're not like, oh, who cares? You're like, oh, wow, that, that's, that's somebody's kid or that, that could be like that. Like, you know, you could slow yourself down to have the experience, but not meet it and join it, you know, being more sovereign, like I like to talk about. But I would say that in the classroom, though, being in that of some of those more like traumatic experiences, hospitalizations, things like that with people like, of course I had compassion for them, but I also got to the clarity that like, by no means did they need me to share that emotion. They needed me to stand really strong so they could have that emotion. Yeah. I think it is just like a new age as far as like people um, and just the way that people talk, you know, or having, having to feel and relate to people you know, um, but then there's also kind of like what Gina says, there's, like you said, the emotional, physical, um, you know, because when you think about something, you, you you internalize those emotions, you internalize those feelings, you know, so the thought of is going to stimulate certain emotions and certain feelings, you know, so it's, you know, natural to have empathy, you know, but separating yourself from the, the person or place or thing or whatever it may be, you know, that's, I know that's a thin line, 
you know, there as well. I, I'm, I know the hearts, all the hearts have like clubs and, and um, Murphy, right? You know, most of them, yeah. The emotional, mental connection, mm-hmm. but then, um, oh, you can, I'll definitely connect with you more mentally, and you know, that's that's how you'll get the physical, <laughs> it's through the mental, it's definitely there. Mm-hmm. That stimulation, that conversation, the the being able to communicate too, you know, which is something sometimes even for me to to communicate how I feel can be challenging because sometimes I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) I feel a lot right now. I need to sit with that because I don't want it to be like, you know, vomit of the mouth of all my feelings at one time can be intense. And that's the hospitability, um, like just being a person of service or being able to work in the hospital or being able to work at, I think Daniel was talking about bread and breakfast, you know, um, you have to be curious about people. You have to understand them to know how they feel, you know. Um, you have to have the level of empathy. Um, is like I said, it's a, it's a thin line, you know, in order to empathize and sympathize with someone. And that's all the details of the Queen of Hearts, the Jack of Hearts, you know, of being that, that person that's that would put their life on the line. I wouldn't say put their life on the line, you know, but they say the Queen of Hearts is more of a personal mother. But, you know, put your life on the line for your kids or your children or whomever. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes for those people, there is no thin line. It is, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm all in, you know. Mm-hmm. I like that all in attitude. Definitely, you know, and, and they, they bring, I think too, when you think about the Queen of Hearts, in the Neptune, Neptune, there is this transcending. There is this, there is this like euphoric love that that they that they generate. And again, I think that is a big part of their attraction. It has nothing to do with the physical, what they look like aesthetically. Though, don't get me wrong, Queen of Hearts, both men and female, are extremely attractive people. They tend to be very good-looking people. But I think everybody's perspective on that is different. But the ones that I've seen. You know, there's an attraction about them. And like I said, it doesn't have, it really doesn't even start with the the out the aesthetics. It's an internal like frequency that they, that I think people are drawn to them. Um, and, and then I think it has a lot to do with that big heart of, uh, you know, I can, ha- I can heal you. I can nurse you. I can take care of you. I can nurture you. It, it's like a, a, a love cleanse, if you will, or a deep, like, um, soft it's like floating in the ocean you know and kind of feeling it at peace in that and that that person you know exudes that i feel like the queen of hearts does but they again they have to also be mindful of you know cleansing their like they're i think queen of hearts have probably are very drawn to that water energy of cleansing and healing in, in that space you know they have to do that uh, have some kind of practices that helps them you know, with their own, you know, emotional regulation because oh, yeah. like, they can like, merge with people and they lose every bit of themselves in that space. Yeah, living on the lakes and then being lifeguards and swimming. I think yeah. that was like a yeah, like a, a lucky break for them. Yeah. No, it's yeah. perfect for them. It's, yeah. it's absolutely what they what is I find that they're drawn to, you know. Yeah. Um, you get to be pretty boy beach bums, meet all the girls, and swim. It's, it's a oh, yeah. I mean, that's the formula. Baywatch. <laughs> I mean, it's Highland Lakes Watch, but yes. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So then what are you guys feeling as we go into the King of Hearts week? That's my Jupiter yeah. card, and I'm excited. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I think the King, and we have this we're right in the midst of the, the eclipse energy. My, you know, the Libra full moon. My moon is in Libra, so this mm-hmm. is interesting to see. Um, but the King of Hearts too is, you know, there is this confidence that comes with this. There's a grace that comes with this, um, and I think there's that that maturity that comes with the King of Hearts too. But there's still, I think, out of all the kings, there's still the the fun, the best <laughs> for fun. No offense or anything, but <laughs> oh, I don't take offense. Come on, that's that's my personality. You're telling yeah. me. That's good. Yeah. They know, have, they're yeah. more relaxed than the other queens. <laughs> but, you know, there also can be aloof. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm really struggling with my innate aloofness. You know, like, because I use my personality, but in in truth, I really am kind of aloof. Do you know what I mean? I really don't get that close, even though. So, 
I've been thinking about that and that self-sabotaging drama, like those ways that we can be like people pleasing cowards and things like that. That's been really up in this area. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, mm -hmm. like, like what, what's your shadow? Like I've been really mm -hmm. literally saying like, what is it about me that I don't necessarily take enough like uh, accountability for, do you know? And I was looking at the traits of the kings, the two kings, the king of diamonds and hearts and the king of hearts. When I was like, oh, gosh, it's like it's that push like the ten of hearts does to go out. But you don't want to because you already have everything you want in your own bratty way in some weird way. Do you know, but your wellness, your health, your full expression is to do something for community, for people to come out more. Do you know what I mean? Like it's almost like what makes your tree flower. Mm hmm. Yeah, I kind of look at it like the um, the lion from the Wizard of Oz, you know, that has this this voice that he wants to go out and and, and let the people hear. And but you know, but and he's a, can be a coward, you know, or be fearful, you know, for whatever reason. So sometimes I refer to the King of Heart as that. Um, but ultimately, you know, once it's, I kind of was looking at the. Um, Queen of Hearts as well, unless she has a Queen of Clubs. But I was like, where does the King of Hearts mature? But it has a King of Diamonds early on. So I think the early part of life, you know, being able to know exactly who they are and knowing their talents, I think it comes with the diamonds and knowing the skills and knowing how to express yourself is important just as much as the Queen of Hearts as well. So both those uh, cards definitely like the influence of um, the voice and who they are um, and the focus so they can, you know, go out and be confident, you know, because I think when diamonds get uh, lost, you know, it's, it can be kind of like the, what some people would call as like, you know, the, the liquid, you know, if, as far as property, the elements, so, you know, it can be lost, you know, into whatever shapes it or form in whatever environment is in, you know. Um, so having- mean like chameleon-like? Yeah, like, you know, just being, if it's not in the right environment, you don't have, if you're in a poverty stricken environment, you know, where someone isn't boosting you or he doesn't know, he doesn't know your value, you know, um, that can take effect upon you as a person, a self reflection. If you don't have, you know, outer you know, we have nobody of good influence around you. So, um, but yeah, it can be like the, the cowardly lion. You know, but it has a lot of potential, you know, for this this brave voice and be able to be helpful and save the people in some type of way, you know. The fire king of the forest. <laughs> I don't know if example. <laughs> Let's not get political. Let's not get political. What's <laughs> getting taken, right? The the irony. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to miss heart season. I've had the really sweet heart week season. It's been really um, softening, and I feel the hard work coming. I mean, the <laughs> just as lazy as well. That can be as lazy. As well. <laughs> but again, I guess, I, that's true. I guess. I guess. I know the diamonds are coming. Like I know the clubs are gonna be my work. Like I'm out of the like getting nurtured and knowing you're good enough and knowing you're valuable. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Now it's like build build what you're gonna build out of the clarity of your mind. So you can't be in self-doubt, you can't be in loops, you can't be singing other people's woes for them or with them. You have to be in, you know, straight ups like you. Source to star, like and then it's see what it says. What this week coming up is a King of Hearts week, and we're in what month? March. And so it's King of Hearts month, and then we'll go to the Queen of Hearts month, but we'll be out of the heart energy for the weekly. Oh, mm -hmm. but we will still have hearts. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, so this is a King of Hearts month. Yeah. And then so mm. April is a Queen of Hearts month, May is a Jack of Hearts month, but we, oh. won't, we won't have any heart week energy or heart days. Um, the heart days come at the starting at the end of June with the King of Hearts. And then July will bring, you know, more hearts as we go on through the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there's that transition of go, leaving that heart on a weekly basis. And, and it makes sense because it's we're, nice we're, that it's gradual. I tell you, whoever's put us on this spinning <laughs> wheel really thought about a lot of things. <laughs> Monthly and that's a signature. 
thing you said that of the Queen of Hearts is something I was reading was how the their more personality, more of like on the monthly um gosh, what did it go? Like more like a monthly seasonal type of energy. I have to find it. I'll find it here in a second. <laughs> but um but yeah, more as far as like the overall energy, um, I think the Jack of Hearts is the is May. Um mm-hmm. Jack of Hearts is in May, and then the King of is a King of Clubs is June. Yeah, Clubs is July, uh, and um, August is the Jack of Clubs. And then King of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds, King of Spades. Yeah, and what we've seen a lot, what I've seen a lot of times, or as far as like the finances and the financial markets around that King of Diamonds. Uh, time period and elections and all those things, all the important financial decisions in last quarter. Uh, uh, a lot of information comes out a lot around that time about, about finances. And so that's kind of how you can kind of follow it. And I've seen the police violence and brutality all usually comes within that June, the, within the summer, right? So we see a lot of high crime and, and those type of scenarios. And what comes with the King of Clubs is crime, you know, and emotional sensitivity, you know, cops and domestic violence, you know, the King of Clubs has the Queen of Hearts and Pluto, you know. So Kendra Lamar actually um, has played his Pluto card this week <laughs> with the disc work record, they say. Uh, so that was pretty interesting coming. But that's per- like, and that's Pluto. You know what I mean? Is to kind of like dig, like let's 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 start some shit. You know, let's let's um let's get this. You know, it. it I think P- Pluto is power. You know, so he you know activated a power, and, and it is interesting that he is the king of clubs, and and that's what you can just I'm telling you the energy will always line up. It will always line up. It always lines up. So, you know, he is. You got. You can't tell me these people don't know the energy. <laughs> Yeah, let's say it's a uh, secret science, right, for a reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, that's why I say you can see the things in movies that a lot of people do know. It, and I think that's the essence of, like, the Queen of Hearts. But like blending, because um, they say it can go into fashion, clothing as well, you know, is blending metaphysical sciences within, like, arts and entertainment and having, like, subliminal messaging and those things. Because the Ace of Spades... Um, is where for the Queen of Hearts. Cosmic lesson. Cosmic lesson. So yeah, mm-hmm. so you have both that you know, um that's the the lesson. You know, I think sometimes all information is there for everybody, for those who is for though, um, can feed and grow from it. And you can find a lot of um tools for self development, you know, um self self reflection, self understanding and, and then also connect like you said to that ace of space and that seven hearts from earlier. Well, and I think too, there's, you know, when we go into like, look at April being queen of heart months, queen of hearts months, what Mm -hmm. happens a lot in April's, you know, uh, April's, what happens a lot in April's marriages, weddings, gatherings, people are coming out, you know, the spring, they want to be seen, they want to look good, you're getting your, the the salons are going to be busy. I guarantee you ask a hairdresser what her busiest month is, she's going to tell you April. (laughs) There's this, it's not just about feeling good with the queen of hearts. It's kind of like all that queen energy wants to look good. Again, they want to be spoiled. They want to, and, and that's another thing too with the queen energy, because it's such a mothering, nurturing for others, you have to be able to spoil yourself, treat yourself, nurture yourself, go get your nails done, go get your hair, go buy yourself a pair of shoes. That's why I like this, I was shopping and I even said this week, um, I was going to go, I did, got my nails done this week. I didn't go buy myself specifically anything. Um, but next week I will, you know, <laughs> cause that's my thing now. I'm going to, I'm working on that, like to make sure I purchase something for myself, even if I don't need it, like that's a big thing for me. So I've been working on that. Um, and as we go more into that queen of hearts month energy, like you said, you'll see more women, you know, maybe you may see more surgeries. You may see more aesthetics, you know, people want to, and it's it's springtime. We're blossoming. It's the perfect time to get those eyelashes I want. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There is a sense of when you look like when you feeling good is connected to how, you know how you like when you present yourself you know and looking good and they they have that you know they they can and they can honestly wear damn near anything and probably still look good in it especially if they 
feel right. like they look good. It won't, yeah. they can be wearing pajamas. Oh yeah, they got some outfits. <laughs> So, you know, one of the other, the other thing that comes up that I experienced that goes with what you're saying too, is at the program I work at, all the girls have to wear like jeans and the same color shirt every day, all week. You know what I mean? Four different colors, depending on your team. But for parent weekend, they got to get dressed up and do their makeup and do their hair. These girls walked differently, Gina. Mm -hmm. Like they talked differently. Even when they came over to her, like, oh, I'm Miss Maddie. I'd be like, oh my God, like, look what happened because she has her jeans on and her shirt with the bra she wants to wear and the makeup she wants. And then it's like, okay, now we can talk. And I was like, well, where was the other, where were you when you didn't have makeup on? Like, isn't that same person still inside there? Do you know, like, it's just an interesting mm -hmm. thing. But I mean, it's true. Like when you get dressed up, you do kind of feel kind of like, mm, you know, cause you're all dressed up or if your hair came really good or makeup, whatever. So it's just it's like interesting... when the lady turns you around after you get your hair done and you, you turn around, you're like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was too Rashad when you turn around and they have your hair done. You know the one we're talking about. <laughs> or, but for men, a fresh cut, you know, or a new outfit, or their sh new shoes. Mm -hmm. It's the same damn thing. It really is. They have. Oh, I'm sure there's some pretty sh clothes that Rashad puts on that he's just yeah, like, mm -hmm. like, look at me. She. But uh, actually, I'm not a mirror. That's seven. That's the seven hearts I mean. I'm not uh, standing in the mirror. Actually, I need to be in the mirror way more and take care of myself way more, to be honest. You know, um, so I definitely feel that, that queen of hearts, seven hearts in the moon, because I have it in Venus, you know. Um, so, yeah, I do need to really look at that a little bit more and making sure that, that you know, I, I self-indulge, because queen of hearts is about self-indulgence, you know, self-pleasure, like you said, looking good, feeling good. So there's the, you no know, feminine, uh, masculine balance in all of us, right? <laughs> so, but that's just king of hearts is self-confidence, you know, side of it. So I, for me, I, it's definitely, I think, that's where it needs to show more, you know, uh, as far as just for me, because I have the King of Hearts speaking up going to, into it. But it is to show the other part of the divine and show the self-confidence so I can walk outside feeling good and talking good and, and being attractive as much as the, fem the feminine is looking, smelling um, attractive. <laughs> so Listen, there's nothing more attractive than a man who has that confidence and, and, and he, like, and he has confidence in, in no matter like what he's wearing or what he's doing. There's just, you can set a woman can smell that. Trust me. So <laughs> when, <laughs> when, <laughs> when you have that, you know, and I think true, like, like you have to think about it too. How can you, if you want someone to, you know, show up, you have to do that for yourself first. If you, if you want someone to say you look good or, you know, I, you know, whatever compliment you, you have to do that for, you know, you have to see that first. You know what I mean? I think you complimenting yourself or doing mirror work or whatever you want to call it is so important because you, you know, when you were younger, you may not have had someone tell you you're beautiful or you're pretty or you look good or you're whatever, you're strong, whatever it may have been. So those are things that you as an adult have to give to yourself first and foremost. And it may seem uncomfortable. I think there's an uncomfortable level with that, right? Being able to speak that to yourself if it was never spoken to you. No, yeah, it is. Even to take compliments is uncomfortable. Right. Take compliments well to be. Right. I well, struggle, I don't know I, if I it's, if it's not too. spoken to you because I think when somebody comes at you, because I've been really noticing the energy of how kids respond, like being with more younger children than I used to be like, if you're talking in a tone like this, even if it's your loud voice, it's still kind of going like this to the kid because they're like, boy, that, that's a really loud radio right now. Like, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, that's real. So I didn't always recognize that that's what was happening. But like, you know, I learned over time. But like, I'm thinking about how the tone is, right? So if you hear a tone coming out of your parent, and it more than likely doesn't have much to do with you, and it comes through like, like that. You're not thinking you're great or anything's great. You're thinking that feels bad, right? Because I do think there's a way that we have to decide ours is cool and it can't be because of somebody else. Because as long as it's from somebody else, we're actually not standing in something we can trust. Yeah. Because then they can take it from, it can be removed. Right. If you can take me up, you can take me down. Right. 
You can just as you much as like me make you can tell say, yeah. Just and, as much as you tell me I'm beautiful, you can, you know, completely tear me down yeah. with all that for the you know as soon as the lines out there to get the pulse of if I'm okay, that means that you're not okay. Right. Because it's right. like I'm gonna I want to get this toy that I have, but I'll get in a second. It's just that those push toys where everything falls apart, you know, it's like if it's not coming from you looking in the mirror going, this is the one I got. This is who I'm here to play. I'm a three of diamonds who knows this at this time, at this age and stage, and I want to rock it, right? But if you take in the narrative of not hearing it, because even saying things like, well, no one really said nice things to me. Like, like I can say, no one asked about my feelings. Well, that's long gone. That might have been true when I was a kid, but boy, I talk a shitload about my feelings. So like that's not happening anymore. Do you know what I mean? So I can hold a narrative that says, well, it was just really hard, but it's really just because I'm really comfortable and I'm kind of like enjoying my comforts and I have to make myself do it and I have to decide what the good reasons are. And as a king, king, I have to do it for good reasons. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. When I think, and, the, oh, go ahead. I'll finish it. No, no, I was just going to say, and I feel like the good reasons take that discernment and that call of like your own confidence, right? Because if I don't have the confidence to even discern, then I'm not going to be able to move at all. Right. I think that's what the threes, all of them, I don't care which one you are. Um, or if you, you don't even have to be a three, if you have them heavy in your spread, there is this level of not having confidence. I find in that in those in those energies because even yeah. when I've had threes in my spread, I'm like, gosh, dog, <laughs> I'm questioning everything. Um, <laughs> you know, so there is this. And Rashad, for you being the three of diamonds, isn't the king's one of the king is your result card, right? Yeah, the king of hearts and the yeah. Card. diamonds. Yeah, so you have you know having that emotional confidence that you know, and you're what your Pluto is the two of hearts. So yeah, I mean there is this essence of. Not looking it's to another. It's the same lesson. It's the right? same lesson. Like yeah. you're learning the same thing I'm learning. Yeah. Well, and I have that mirror in my life. <clears throat> yeah. And I'm like, wow, I don't know what to do because, like, I probably could put a little water on it or sun on it more, but then I'm like, but what am I creating when I do that? Am I like greasing it so I get what I want? Because I don't want to do that, right? right. I want to be authentic, right? Right. Look at my little toy. So like. This is you with confidence. This is your daughter. <laughs> Where my mind just went is not there, but that's just because I am really. Well, it's the same I, thing. It, it happens downstairs and upstairs, right? With confidence, without confidence. Okay, like it's like that. <laughs> oh God, I just, let me just stop. <laughs> We're in the spring. It's the spring toy. <laughs> <laughs> the plant has. Confidence. Uh, so you got to water yourself because it's a foundation of your core beliefs that helps you grow something you believe in. Because if you're waiting for someone else to say yours is okay and somebody walks by and says, oh, God, I hate red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm dead. Like, no, you're not dead. You uh, hate red. Who cares? You're not red. You know, or if you, they're not, you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy how much we can take each other up and down. I just been giggling about it because me too, you know, not everybody, but there's certain people that like, just the way they look at me, I'm like, you know, and then other people I could care less. Most people I could care less, but every now and then I'd pick one and I'm like, hmm, what are they looking at me? Do they like me? And it's usually the one who thinks I'm annoying, you know, and I'm trying to get them to like me, like something stupid like that. I'm saying shit I'm not doing anymore. Well, I know for me, like, you know, I, I talked very candidly about how when I went to teach the card course, right? And Which I, you did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. You really um, did. That was, and I didn't, and, and I think having the confidence to do that was something that I struggled with because, and I'll never, I mean, I, you know, me and, and the, with the cards, like that week I had the seven of clubs in Pluto. I probably had a three in there somewhere. And I was, I had to like really build my own confidence to be able to move forward of the way that I was kind of convincing myself that it wasn't going to work. And I, I realized it was, I had to build myself up. I had to have that within me to want to, com to commit to it, you know, cause it was, it was like, there was this inside like voice that 
was like, no one's going to sign up. No one's going to want to do that. No one's going to pay. And, and I was like, what? and those are our parents' voices and our ancestors' voices. Yes. Those are like old, knowing, like kind of voices. I mean, I think one of the jobs of every human being is to get those voices out of your head. Yeah. Because they're not daily yours. They're collective daily garbage. <laughs> Okay. No, seriously, it's a daily, daily practice. thing to do. And I promise you, though, when you do it, it, it changes your life it, and, and it, you work at it. It's, I feel like, too, the energies that come, you know, because when you start with, with all the weekly readings that I do, you, you start to see the patterns and, and, and how these plates play out. And I really do see that certain situations are really testing you, the, the work that you've done, like how, how, you know, here's another situation. Are you going to be confident in this situation? Or are you going to talk yourself out of it? You know, so each time and it's not to hurt you, it's really to kind of get you to a level of that, you know, you feel secure in your 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 strengths and your weaknesses. You know what I mean? Like um, and really being able to recognize where you may be doing that limiting talk in that those limiting beliefs that you have, like you said, and that aren't why, really, right? they're not it's yours. The cost analysis in these things, right? Because it's an energy, right? So it's like, what is it? What's the payoff to keep doing what you're doing? Because there's usually a reason we're doing something in our mm -hmm. own desires or our own ego's construct, right? Like, what's the reason that I'm taking like a shortcut here and not coming? Like, what what am what am I telling myself or not telling myself? Like, what does this mean to me? Like, who cares what anyone else thinks? It's like you said you want to do this, and why is your energy not there? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Where's your energy? Yeah. And it's usually held, like you said, in some belief or some idea that's pretty much like like printing a hose on your life force. Yep. And until you and that's what I, I really, I mean, I'll never forget that week. I, I sat in my house, you know, I work from home, so I'm home all the time. And it was, you know, nobody was here. And I really had to like really work the mind <laughs> and the conversation and the beliefs that I was, be, you know, coming up that was convincing me that it wasn't going to work. And I'm so grateful that I was, I have the tool to be able to look. I was like, you know what? Cause like I've shared before, I never looked at the, my spread to the week that I was going to start. Like I just, I'm mm -hmm. impulsive like that. Let me just do it. I don't care what, what, you know. Mm -hmm. And once I did and I could see, oh my God, it, it's so supportive. So it's me. It was literally yeah. me and having to really like look at myself. And that's when I've always said that, that, you know, doing that, what is that word? The dark night of the soul that I always struggled with realizing it's this. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's me also recognizing that we live in a collective consciousness and yeah. consciousness, right? We also live in a shared genius, right? We live in a collective pool. So owning and knowing and growing the one that's you, that's part of the job, but then being able to join in and not lose yourself in the current of what those other voices or those doubting things could do. One of the things that happened, I was up in the middle of the night with the full moon last night, and it was I wasn't sure what was going on, but Tesla kept coming into my brain. I was like, Tesla, why am I? Like Nikola's Tesla. And so, and the way that he would talk about, because there's a lot of things I'm listening to right now that are making me aware of the possibility that we have a far more expansive experience as humans, and we can create healing in many different ways that are far more simple than what we've been creating out of this third dimension. And it has so much to do with going to a higher place and kind of almost believing it and helping to create the abundance of the things you need from a higher perspective, right? And not necessarily keeping that undertone of like, I'm doing it, I got to work, I got to do this, I got to do that, because that just feels like you're on the, the treadmill all day, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the way that he would speak about being able to heal things in other dimensions and spaces and the way he even has wires going across the world that we can do this right now. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it just kept me so stimulated in my third eye and my um, crown. I was like, wow, I wonder what I want to say or ask for to support that type of manifesting of my higher self informing this avatar. Because it feels like if we just let the avatar run the show we're running off of whatever the information is that's coming at us or was laid on top of us that someone else passed on because it's what they heard right so there does seem to be so much call to refinement and alignment to assignment just like 
get to that higher self connection, higher power, however you want to call it, but like see it from the top down. Yeah. It's, I had a, um, one of my good friends who's a very, you know, big spiritual mentor for me. She's always told me, you know, stand like, see yourself standing up straight and the light, you know, like it's a visual thing to do, like see the light from the top down, the white light. And like, that's, that's how you connect. And I, I always, you know, this was shit, nine years ago when I met her and I was, I had a hard time with that, but it was now that I'm here with the cards and the energy, it makes sense. It really makes sense to me. And it is a visual practice that I'll do, you know, trying to see myself, you know, vertical and, you know, being able to really connect to that light um, is so important. Um, and if you don't, Gina, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I need one of those just because of my own entertainment. Well, I, I'm gonna. I, I ordered some. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna send out some spring gifts. I just ordered a little package. Yeah. Of them, like, cause you're too funny. That is. I love that. It's, it's, really it's, it's the perfect visual for me too. <laughs> and and it's so great. It has seven little <laughs> nodules on it. Do you know? So like, it's just funny. So um, <clears throat> but I, I a really mean, long time. On what y'all was speaking about, um, the. The tw that's also goes into what I was looking for earlier. Uh, it's the importance of the twelve or the Queen of Hearts is creationism, you know, and the embodiment of the creative spirit. You know, they say that intuition is created within the womb. You know, and I, I kind of believe that to a certain extent. You know, we used to talk about waters and Mali water, and, and a lot of the spiritual concepts of water comes from that Neptune position. So the intuition is, is very important for the Queen of Hearts. And also within the intuition concept, the eight the space is a cosmic blessing, right? Um, so the I think when you ask, I don't know where I read it at, where I sent it for, from, but when I said, you, when you ask for for information, you should be asking for information and not just money and material value, you know? So the the, the quest should be knowledge, information, and, and, and also how to create uh, whatever you want out of this, this physical realm, um, you should ask through spiritually as well, you know? And you shall seek and the answers shall come, you know? So that's a form of creation, you know, and, and that spiritual intuition, you know, and seeking information and knowledge, and also maybe even medicine or healing practices, mm -hmm. you know, walking through the forest and asking for, for a um, cure or something or how to heal someone and, and stumble upon, you know, the flower or based upon your intuition, you know, so mm -hmm. it's all into those those spiritual sciences, you know, and things that we, we don't know exactly how they happen, but they happen like that because yeah. you, those are interesting spirit is something a voice from what acts for whatever you found you know so the the importance of the 12 that comes from the queens also it's i was speaking I'm trying to get to the importance of the, the personality of the queens it says the queens are co-rulers of the 12 signs of the zodiac and the 12 houses and, and the 12 houses of the planets so that was the a symbology around the 12 and the 12 simple letters of the Hebrew alphabet and also connected with the 12 signs and the relationship, which is one of the secrets of the Rosicrucians doctrine, as in the full significance of the 12 grand points of masonry. So um, it's a lot of like, you know, knowledge, information and, and symbolism and embodied within to the, the Queen of Hearts and the 12. Yeah, I recently listened to something about the king's chambers and that astrology is what's on the walls, those 12 houses and stuff. So like, I just think this astrology stuff is so interesting how it used to just be like a little horoscope corner in the paper, right? And meanwhile, it's like, wait a minute, there's a lot of information we're not paying attention to. And we're just thinking these two lines tell us if we're gonna have a good day or not. Mm -hmm. And it's like, boy, we really narrowed that field, if you will, right? We didn't really make that too big for people to consider. Well, because God forbid you know who you are, you know, God, God forbid this was something that the inform, you know, the information was, you know, accessible because you, you then have a better understanding of who you are, you're, you know, because then, then, you know, you couldn't be indoctrinated. So, but that's another show. <laughs> that's another day. Well, yeah. 
that because I think that's, that's a so fair thing though. You couldn't be indoctrinated. Like sovereignty is the beginning of reclaiming our natural rights. We're mm -hmm. the gold. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it could be another show. A whole another show. <laughs> but, but I think that's the one that should happen. And that's why they only gave you that. You know what I mean? Because here's this. And, and for some, it probably sparked, I want to know more, you know, I need to know more. And, and see, that's why probably some have dived into, I mean, Bronte's talked about that a lot. Like he used to read and it made him very curious to want to know more. And so he's been studying astrology for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And I think too, like with those little, cause I used to read them too. Was What was her name? Oh, They're, right. Oh, right. I don't know. But yeah. Know. But you know what I'm like in the, I used to read it all the time as a kid and, mm -hmm. and being, you know, I knew I was a Leo and I sometimes wouldn't, connect to a lot of that energy. So um, once I understood my moon and my rising, I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense now, you know, and it, it and now even every bit of placements that I have, because I've definitely have mm -hmm. dived in. Um, and you can see how it all, it's not just that one, that just like the cards, you're not, I'm not just the jack of hearts. You yeah. know what I mean? I have all of these cards in my, in my spread. I'm playing a whole hand you are operating from that whole wheel, you know, from all of those placements. And then you have to understand too, when they're moving the energy, you know what I mean? Th that is it, playing out in your life as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very fascinating to, 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 to do that. But again, if you didn't, it, why would they ever, or they, what, you know what I mean? Knowing ourselves is, is, is the, the, the well, goal. I mean, if we were meant to grow out of the mud, quote unquote, their third dimension is pretty muddy, yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we we grew a lot of mud. We grew a lot of reasons. We grew a lot of sides. We grew a lot of wars. We grew a lot of teams, and then everyone wakes up to somehow we're all connected, and those splits in us are limiting our clarity. Do you know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. then that's an invitation to a different experience, and that's what I I experienced this whole eclipse game to be all about. It's like. Who am I when I'm not consumed with the programming? How do I deprogram myself enough to maybe start to hear and trust more information? Right? Yeah. So I wouldn't yeah. like that. So there's one other factor about the King of Hearts I want to say, but go ahead, Rashad. I want you to speak on that first. No, I'm going to say we need to do something with the clips. I need to call um, um, the Six of Hearts. Um, gosh. I can't believe I forgot his name. Uh, I ain't forget his name, but um, well, I, Bill. I was just thinking of him um, earlier today. Actually, I was like, um, I, I didn't know if I should text him or not because I don't know if he was available with the, with the time or anything. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we need to do an eclipse uh, run. Uh, maybe speak about that and maybe maybe next week. Yeah, it could be in between the two because you have the twenty fifth and the eighth. So next mm -hmm. week we could do it. Yeah, uh, and also King of clubs, right? Or is that be the Jack of Hearts? That's great. Um, For what? Oh no, it'd still be the Queen of Hearts month, right? So yeah, to the tomorrow's the Jack of Clubs day, but yeah, we're still in the Queen of Hearts. Where are we? The King of Hearts month, and then we'll be in the Queen of Hearts month too. Right. So that, you see that with the clips, with it being Aries and Libra axis. So the the self yeah. and the relationships. How do you have autonomy in your relationships? How do you, like you, you, you spoke about it a little bit, the people pleasing, that's very Libra, you know, moon energy as a Libra moon. <laughs> um, there's that people pleasing and pleasing others, but are you also pleasing yourself? Are you making sure that within that space, you're not, you know, being so more concerned about the other, um, there's a balance in trying to have that balance. And I think people, you know, hype up the eclipse energy is it being bad? I, I don't look. If you're not supposed to be in my life, and the universe takes you out, shit. What am I supposed? You know. <laughs> it means you're both going on to better things. Like I have gotten I've never so seen a time that you don't get. You find something better. It just takes what it takes to get to the next place. I have gotten so comfortable and at peace with that that it. I. I it's not that I'm not going to be unbothered or I wouldn't be sad because I'm mm -hmm. a heart. But I, I have a pig. Right. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh God. Um, I do. I cry. I cry over a commercial for for real. So I'm good. just having fun with you. I just so, how so you have the nine of spades. Um, so that comes with the king of hearts also. You yep. Know? 
Space. I have to, like, and, and you know, I look at, I have had such a huge, like, uh, looking at those nines from such a, a better place because if not, it can be pretty daunting. Mm -hmm. But I've learned, like, you know, because I've literally witnessed the universe be like, <laughs> nope, no mind. Nope. Nope. Yeah. And I'm like, <gasps> but then I realized, holy crap, I'm being protected. Like, it, and so I have That's a lot it, of, Tina. That's I it. Such a, gratitude for it like so if the universe is removing you you're not good for me and i can't Especially be mad when you're in alignment when you come into alignment and things yeah. go away you're being more than protected you're being like grown yes. like the universe yes. is growing you right yeah. so i want to speak to this confidence thing right because we recognize that we all need confidence as part of what makes ours grow strong and clear so we can do whatever we do while we're here and i can say in my you know my set of cards in my experience I can't tell you how many times I hear it. Just yesterday, I'm on the phone with my mother outlaw, and she was like, But you know, man, you like, you have so many ways with people, and everybody just loves you, and everywhere you go, everyone loves you. And as she's saying it to me, instead of me being like, Yeah, I'm like, Oh, God, yeah. Gosh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Huh? Like, what do you mean I'm sorry about that? Like, that's part of the magnetism. And I mean, we all have that magnetism. Like Gina talked about, like, let the universe give you what you need. Like, speak it into life. Like, wake yourself up to who you are when you're not repeat and rinse cycle every day. You know what I mean? Like, And I don't know where it came from, if it's in people pleasing or comparison or the duality. But, like, when I would stand and shine and be Madeline, not everybody in the room was excited by it. And because of my... <laughs> time when I was more empathic, I was really sensitive to the fact that other people weren't excited about how shiny I was. And I wasn't trying to be too shiny. I was really being Madeline, right? Like I, like if anything, I'm, I'm even shinier than I know yet, honestly, because I'm still learning to put her out more in the sun, you know, but that's not my fault. And I'm not responsible for how it creates something for someone else. So I invite everyone to consider like, walking tall in your own confidence, regardless of how it might activate something in someone else. Because if it does, that's on them. Like that's for them to sort. That's for them to notice. Why am I looking at that flower and thinking it's annoying? Like that person's just flowering. Like why aren't I seeing beauty in that flower? Right. And granted, you know, we got the eights and the eight of spades and the eight of clubs. So we certainly like, accept there's a bully type energy that might come through. That makes well, it's it strong. It's it's, let's be let's break that down. Well, though. It's, it's strong. Yeah. It's confident. And I think people I, my, I have a niece who's a king of diamonds and you can't, you know, granted, she's teen, you know, the teenager energy. So real big with the I know you can't tell me what to do type stuff. So there is this I've tried to explain to my brother, like you have to have. Um, she needs an outlet for this energy or she is going to be a, a tyrant trying to rule your house, your castle. So mm -hmm. give her an outlet to move this energy. If not, it is going to be intense for you because um, there is this confidence of I come with this dominance and rulership and leadership of knowing and being very clear. But again, they have that the one eyed king, the king of diamonds. So there's this essence of there being that blindsidedness of not being open to you know the the uh, options or others you know advice or information because again they have they come there is a, such a strong confidence and then having that eight of clubs in Saturn can make you extremely stubborn and extremely fixed on what you know what you believe and nobody else's opinion is going to infiltrate your mindset right so I think that's one thing about when we talk about kids and parents, like if you know anybody who's raising a king, when I when I talk to people, I'm like, what's your when's your kid's birthday? I'm like, oh, <laughs> you got a king. <laughs> you know, they're going to try to rule you. They're going to try to dominate you. They're going to try to insert their power, you know, and, and I, it's just beneficial to know that that's the energy you're dealing with. So you understand you're not battling them because there could be a, I'm sure I've watched my brother and his daughter is such a battle. Well, that's what my state of club son was. He kept yeah. thinking he was in charge of the house and I right. would just laugh at him. <laughs> but when I would be more insecure about my mothering or in a mood where I was like, stop it, don't be mean to me. But for the most part, like 80, 90%, I would just laugh when I was just like, don't you wish, bro. Not this lifetime. Yeah. 
girl's going to shine and you're not going to be the king dominant game. And I'm going to listen and laugh at you because I can appreciate the process that is to let it go because you've been running it for a good number of years. You know, we've understood or jokingly played with the idea that we came back into life again. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. we played it like that jokingly. But what a perfect rub to force me to lead, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. I would have potentially found enough people that did it my way and stayed quiet. But if somebody comes in telling me that they're going to push against my way, it's going to make me push myself more, right? So mm -hmm. I need to say that how the cards are designed so amazingly to help us grow. Like, mm -hmm. wow, we're so lucky. Yeah. And and like with that, I think too, you know, because you you probably were in different roles, you know, where he may have been the father or the, you know, yeah. the, the parent. Oh, yeah, totally. And, and you, you know, so you're just reversing it to kind of, you know, and that is how I think we, we play because you, you start to see these cards, you know, they travel together in little packs, you know, and, and I think that um, you see that within the family dynamics a lot too, a lot of Saturn connections, you know, which brings back the past life karmic stuff. So there are debts that be paid in some way, you mm -hmm. know, and you're just reversing the, 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 the energy to, you know, give back to the debts or pay, you know, take, you know, get what you're owed in some way, shape or form. Oh yeah. I feel very committed to honoring his boundaries and not like taking over his sovereignty. You know, I really do because he cares for me a lot as I do him. And I think the, the value of everybody being able to really be themselves has been a shared value that's helped. Yeah. Right? Like there hasn't been a way, like I can accept you're going to be different, but I'm not going to agree with you. Okay. Right. And, and, you know, you know, I've talked about my kids all the time and how they have shown me when you know their card, like for it, my oldest daughter, they, that were, both of my kids are aces. So there is this, you know, she is not one to sit around and relax, <laughs> always on the go, always on the move. And I, you know, in the at first it, it was something like I was like, can't you just like chill. I'm a chill. I'm very, I can chill. <laughs> I can be super chill. And it's so much so that I can get very late. It can be very lazy where she is like, I can't, I can't do that. And so understanding that she needs that, that nature of getting up and going and allowing it was one was a hard thing too, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, but I've learned, you know, and with the little one, I remember when we, I would take her to the playground and I'm like, why are you not playing with the other kids? Like, what are we doing here? And she's off by herself, chasing whatever. And then on certain days, she would want to play. Then I, when I learned the Ace of Clubs to a hearts, you know, flip flop, I was like, ah. <clears throat> so on your Ace day, you could give two flying craps about being around. You don't need nobody to play with. You off into your own world. You you don't even actually want to be bothered by anybody. But on your two day, what are we like? can she come play? Can I go here? I'm like, whoa, the other day you could care, care less about this person. And now you want them to come over and play. It made sense. It makes sense now, you know, so just even that, I mean, there's obviously more to their, their spreads, but just mm -hmm. that has helped me. I don't know. But if we go to the playground, she doesn't want to interact with anybody. I'm not over here trying to force her or trying to get her to play with kids when she, re that's, that's not what she wants. Mm -hmm. So I think that that helps in understanding yeah. her. So we, if Rashad has a question. Go ahead, Rashad. Yeah. So someone asked about as a Queen of Hearts, um, age fifty-one. Can you briefly talk about age fifty-two in the cards in relation to Chiron return at that time? Uh, I don't know where Chiron return is exactly. Uh, I'm not fifty like to fifty-two. You usually are gonna go through your Chiron return between the ages of fifty to fifty-two because it's slower transit. So I guess that since it's when that time that be the same at the same place, I was like, I don't know where it is, but it's a return, right? So <laughs> that means Yeah, it's coming back to your you know, NATO placement. Where's Chiron right now? Aries. So anybody who's um born in like what seventy seven early seventies, I think have Chiron and Aries. Cause I'm 79 and I have Chiron and Taurus. So it's a, it's a long, it's a generational kind of transit more long, longer. So yeah. anybody in that, anybody between the ages of like 48, 49 to 50. That's the Aries right now. 
So yeah. you, Chiron is an Aries. So the identity, who you are, is kind of where your wound came from. Um, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say, we, we, we kind of spoke about that with the um, cosmic, with the cosmic moon or the moon card for the queen of hearts uh, and the seven of hearts. Uh, I think that has, and also the ace of spades kind of deals with your spiritual understanding, who you are, you know, your purpose, you know, what drives you, what motivates you, um, making sure that you don't let anyone else, you know, deflate your own, deflate your balloon, you know? So being, being positive also goes into your mental and physical health as well, you know, can be a reflection, making sure that I think physical and, and mental health, um, he, especially with the seven of hearts, I think when someone is physically fit or working out and, and making sure they're in shape, they're emotionally and, and mentally strong as well. You know, you, you feel that much more confident about yourself. Um, I want to say you don't see a lot of um, wealthy people that's not fit, but I think um, luxury and time, you know, allows you to work out, like I say, in um, LA. So, you know, I'm going to a lot of different wealthy neighborhoods and everyone is outside walking around, you know, everyone is outside working, working out physically and making sure they, they sing, they um, are um, just moving just in general, you know. So, um, especially with the seven hearts, you're going to your health as well. You know, so making sure that you're, you're healthy, uh, seven hearts, seven of diamonds, making sure you're healthy in the ace of space. That's why I'm getting to the ace of space. Go to your physical health. So make sure that you're staying healthy, you know, in your diet or any type of changes as far as dietary that could probably come up as well or, or what you may eat, what you like, what you don't like. But also what happens around that age period is also um, start going to your planetary ruler card as well. So um, I don't know which planet you rule by or which queen of hearts you, you are. So you may start looking at like your planetary ruler card also. Like anything else, Gina? Well, the fact that the queen of hearts, I, I link the Chiron to trans, your transformation card too. So the seven of diamonds is their transformation card. And, you know, I that's the millionaire's card, right? And I always say millionaires don't have a broke mindset. So they, it is, and when you think about Aries, it's who I am. Right. So she has to see her, herself, you know, as an abundant being, as someone who and, and don't take money out of that whole millionaire thing. It's it's your ability to attract prosperity, your abundance, your your frequency, you know, and knowing who you are and standing on that, because if you're about to be 52, you're, you're in a critical year. And especially with the Queen of Hearts, your health. You know, because again, you can indulge, you can go overboard, especially with the sweets and the cakes and the desserts and the, and the treats and stuff. So your heart health, being a heart, should definitely be very important. And how do you love yourself and nurture yourself? Because that is how you then attract your abundance, you know, your ability to prosper, your ability to have that millionaire energy, if you will, and however that may show up, right? It's nothing to do with money. But there's such a, and remember, I, I talk a lot about how the sevens are the inside out. And that's kind of the Aries energy from, you know, the I am the first. So having this belief that I am, you know, whatever it is that you, that's what you, that's who, that's what you'll be able to attract. So as you go into 52, you know, and, and remember Chiron is the wound, but it is also the healer. Your wound is the, the, the wound is the catalyst to the healing. Don't let the wound, don't stay stuck to the wound. Focus on how you can heal. The wound is there. You can't make it go away. You can't, you know, dissolve it. It's there, but you can heal from it. So I, I have a very big thing about, yes, their wound is a part of you, but don't, don't stay there. Where's the healing? So look at your transformation card as the, the ability to heal. What's the, the, the highest aspect of that card and operate from there? Because I think that that's a big, part of that the healing process um that we have um so her being a queen of hearts and the seven of diamonds being her transformation card you you know i'm rich bitch no i'm just kidding <laughs> let me stop um but it is having that attitude like <laughs> <laughs> how are you gonna get there woman how are you gonna get there right you know and so heal heal the wound like heal that wound that tells you you're not 
or you couldn't be or whatever it might have been. And it very well could have came from your mom, your mama, because you're a queen of hearts. You know that you have you, you're sick. You have a six of spades pushing you and the you, Rashad, the seven of hearts is their cosmic moon. And even the sixes and the sevens are about accountability, responsibility, the inside from the inside out. Right. So when you start it making makes sense that, with past life stuff, right? It makes sense with the way astrology can also help us understand our South node and what we come in to learn as the cards give us a sense of that with the transformations. There seems to be a way that you mentioned our wound and the healing are together, right? It's, it's a, it's a classroom. It's a process, right? It's like, it's your opportunity to use the next level of your gas tank, if you will. It's like you have a reserve and a reserve but you need to get to the reserves mm -hmm. of like gas and fuel to like express yourself and be yourself. And sometimes in your wounding or your traumas, again, life force is being held. So it's like, what's the creative way you're going to meet it. And I think what we do is we look for our wound in other people to try to fix it. And that's why a lot of relationships are like wound marriages, right? Because yeah. We attract we want, mm -hmm. Right. We attract similar wounds because we're actually learning about ourselves in those things. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. I mean, every relationship is a classroom. You're not doing any of them wrong because they go left or you get freaked out or you get triggered and get like, good. That's what needs to happen. Cause you mm -hmm. want to get the part that's not fully there with you all the way through. And mm -hmm. sometimes experiences is the only way. The only, What are you going to do? Lock yourself away and never experience, you know, any kind of intimacy or pleasure or pain you can't that's one thing yeah you can you can go and i'm not saying like there you 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 should have that time you know i have spent a lot of time with me because it was necessary because i'm being you know out with i bought again that energy of others and you know but who am i outside of that right and so you know i have very much appreciated the time i have spent doing this work and as I kind of come out and, you know, maybe open up to relationships, there is a part of me that's a little like, okay, but at the same time, I welcome it because I do know that is a big part of your, the, like, is the work working? <laughs> well, I was just, you didn't hear me because my mic was off. I was like a little pushing away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it comes in its own time. That's the beautiful part. And I love that. It happens when it happens for people. Because like, say, in your own experience, you're still rebirthing yourself with new clarity. So you want to get to the highest clarity you can before you decide to share it all the way so that you don't lose your ground that you've made so far. And I think, too, we don't, like, I think there's this misconception that you have to be completely healed to get into a relationship. I think that's BS. I think you're going to continue. If you're willing to do the work. If you're, you're constantly working on yourself with or without a relationship, but, but the relationship will show you where you have probably more work to do <laughs> because there's some triggers that can come up, you know, and, and, and rather than, I think the, the best part about like sitting with yourself is when something does come up within a relationship, you're not reactive. You really do like, wait a minute, why am I feeling this way? Why is this triggering me? Why am I thinking like this? Why am I? You know, I found myself, I would focus on everything that could go wrong. Why this wouldn't work. Why this can't be. Why? And that why? probably is the people who grew you up, right? Because yes. that's the kind of stuff that, unfortunately, in the generations yeah. you came from, that's the way it got passed on to make sure you didn't mess up. Instead of encouraging and finding out what you knew, the frame was, well, da 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 you was kind of speaking of earlier, you know, that passed down trauma and, and voices, I think, that in, that we don't realize that are telling us or making us think a certain type of way of stuck in the lower t um, vibrations of the sevens and the nines, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to reprogram ourselves. That's the nine of clubs, nine of spades, because it's, it's things that has been taking place over generations, over time periods, you know, that we all have program myself, you know, and some people have escaped the great great part of escapism, right? <laughs> but some people have escaped and, and put this up and been able to reprogram themselves in different ways. But yeah, that's it, those those lines. And I was I was, I think I had got caught up when you were saying um generations earlier, but that is that part of, you know, the, the bad part of that generational um negativity that can be passed down. 
you don't realize it, but. Yeah, yeah so we have to change the channel. We have to change the channel. We have to up the frequency. We have to keep the high vibrational diet, whether it's through food or whether it's through music you listen to, activities you do, because everything has to move. She talked about her elderly grandmother wanting sweets, you know, and how is it because she can't necessarily express herself? And I think there's a truth and in, in, in that to a degree, but there's also like there's nothing else exciting. Like, you know, like it used to be having a piece of cake or something was exciting. Like sweets were kind of made exciting. So well, they were made as a reward. Yeah. And, and soothing and, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we we get addicted to the reward. We get mm -hmm. addicted. I've I've been mindful about that with the kids. Like it, it, I never wanted to use food as a way to because I feel like there's that can bring addictions, that can bring comfort, that brings a lot. Yeah, yeah. Of stuff, for a sure. lot. For sure. So, I think there's, you have to have a, there's a, you know, a, when you look at people who struggle with food, there's an emotional, I feel like they were somehow, some way as children, 100%. yeah, used as a tool or as like, I don't like when in, in school you get a, a, a candy for doing this, you know what I mean? So now you're associating this, you mm -hmm. know, sweets or this, this, this sugar, this, this euphoric high, yeah. <laughs> like I yeah. might as well give them a line of a, a line of cocaine while you're yeah. at it. Um, Throw a little red dye in it. Right. I mean, come on. So, <laughs> <laughs> and now you can't, now you're frustrated because they can't sit down. I mean, you did it to yourself. Yeah. Right. I think, and that's another thing too. I mean, I could do a whole show on diet and food and kids, yeah. but, and that would be a queen of hearts thing too, because when, and again, there's this, this, a lot of times food was used as an escapism or a reward or, oh, you're crying. Here's a bowl of ice cream. And so now you're crying your emotions into this sweet bowl of, pleasant <laughs> mm -hmm. yummy yeah and escape and a little bit of yeah. a chemical shift right yes so oh a huge so yeah. something came up before when we were talking and we just go like we go and i we do have to go i have to go too but um it's interesting how alcohol was promoted like big time right like alcohol was mm -hmm. like the way to get through it right you know mm -hmm. have a drink after work you know relax da, da, da. but like it's sugar and what it really does is it distorts our emotions mm -hmm. like alcohol usually distorts emotions and emotional clarity right and you can get really stuck there so it's so interesting in this whatever game board we're playing whatever we're waking up to whatever truman show it is how <laughs> part of it included alcohol as like a main vein to keep us all connected but it wasn't connected in the purity and the high frequency and the sovereignty that we can create like and I'm not picking a team, but when you think about the message behind, like, say, marijuana, even like it's about peace. It's about like family. It, it, it is about communication. It's about discerning and integration of what's happening inside of you. You know, sometimes it's a private medicine in a way. Right. So it's interesting how the social culture that we've been growing in has used sugar and alcohol and things like that since we are in essence chemical we're chemicals right and those are really strong chemicals very, very it is chemicals. related to the queen hearts as well because <clears throat> um, also the seven of hearts seven of diamonds another part of that um drunken sailor um <laughs> thing that i was speaking with the seven of hearts someone but <laughs> But um, but alcohol, you know, um, drinking, escapism, all coming through those things, and and the freedom. It's a of false confidence, right? It's a false confidence, like liquid muscles, right there. Jack Daniels gives me the courage. Forget, it, I'm sorry. But yeah, like you said, yeah, the liquid liquid courage that comes through, and and the love, you know, the the false sense of maybe love, you know, that you may feel of, and the freedom of being yourself um that comes with it so yeah um i don't know as much as far as the natural alcohol like the essence of it but i do know that alcohol has, has been distorted to a certain extent as well but i also think it, it plays into uh, creativity and, and all those things maybe in its most natural states uh, possibly but i do know there's natural well, like if you're a bunch of gypsies in the woods building and making medicines and hanging out and bonding and sharing about your families and in an intimacy relationship and stuff and you have some mead that you made that has alcohol in it or from the corn or something that's kind of a very different effect than like <laughs> exactly. you know, like martinis three of them 
Yeah, the herbal essence. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. That's a very different. And by yourself, after having a pissed off day, three martinis. Mm, that's very different than a homemade meat or shared alcohol, homemade wine or something with your family in an intimate space too deep in the emotional connection. So it is all about how you use medicine. So I'm not dissing all the way, but it's just so interesting how it was such a big move. I mean, girls in bikinis standing with bottles of alcohol, like, but all. Well, I mean, follow the money. The reason why it's promoted in such a way is you follow the money and who's connected to it. And you'll see, you'll get all your answers there. Um, because it's not just the alcohol, it's not just the people who make the alcohol, but it's the, the, the snowball effect. You know, the courts, the, you know, the, the, the fees, you know, like you, there's laws, you know, so it, it's a trickle effect of the money of, 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 mm -hmm. of all of it. Even the sugar, too. What does the sugar do? It keeps you sick. Wanting more. Well, addicted. Right. So you're in and then sick on top of it, too. So now you're a patient. So you're just a cash cow. You, you allowing the vices to turn you into a cash cow to a system that is banking on you, you know, to numbing yourself because you don't know who you are. Let's right? not do it anymore, everybody. <laughs> Come on, let's not do it anymore. I want to be this and not this. Come on. <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. oh, my God. Oh, I love it. No, and I, you know, I just, I drank a lot. So um, there was definitely a part of my life for a very long time. And I, I just made the decision to actually, the universe helped me make that decision by removing me from um, people that I did. I, you know, it's all we did was a big part mm -hmm. of our, our, yeah. our connection. Things, and things are real with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I had a ball. Uh, <laughs> I've always will have a ball. But um, well, you get to learn stuff about yourself. Some truth comes out. I mean, I've told you all that I, I worked on Monday night so I could tell the guys what they told me over the weekend so they'd find out what they weren't telling themselves. You know? Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I for me, you know, an alcohol, you can see how it, you know, the, the spirit, you know, to it because it, it can bring out different spirits that you may not even know you had inside of you, you know. <laughs> But yeah, that's the um, Queen of Hearts, Seven of Diamonds law that goes into the, they, they get into a lot of court issues. So that, that does relate a lot, right? <laughs> but um, so, but yeah, the, the emotional sense thing, I mean, we're controlled by our emotions, as I was saying earlier, the Queen of Hearts and the, and the club spiritually, you know, the hearts transforms into the clubs. So our emotions push a lot of the decisions that we, that we make and that can hinder us or cripple us as well. Um, as Gina was saying, how hard it can be pushing to that, um, that transformation, uh, gaining uh, mental control, you know, over your emotions. So, yeah. But like I said, I don't want to keep us too long. I don't know if there's any other questions. Uh, Ali, I don't like sweets. My parents did not play that. I call could connect to the 12th house and also the star algal. Um, which I haven't heard of that uh, exactly uh, with the concept of alcohol. Um, and I would, yeah, so we'll maybe be able to research, maybe send me some information. Uh, or I could definitely see it connected to the 12th house for sure. It's very Pisces, very Neptune, very, um, like you said, it's that liquid courage. It gives you, it, 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 for, okay, I mean, like women who drink, you know, who would never, you know, talk to this guy, <laughs> whatever the case may be, you know, alcohol would make it, make him look a little bit nicer, you know? <laughs> oh, Lord. I mean, or vice versa. You know, you've heard men say, you know, the, the drinks made her pretty. I don't know. You know, oh, so. Yeah, so funny. It's so true. It's very true. Like, come on. But it also means that you got over your judgment and you felt the energy, but you also were meeting your own loneliness and be like, yeah. it's talking to me. So I'm going to talk to it, right? Mm -hmm. but yeah, I got to go too. Mm -hmm. This was great. Who knows where we're going to go, but it's always great. It's so much fun. Yeah. So I don't know. As far as I don't want to. I don't want to do anything repetitive. Maybe if it is the second set or if we do it in similar ways, but um, we've come full circle. The only one that we haven't done is the Ace of Diamonds. And the Ace of Diamonds week is coming up 
Um, when would the Ace of Diamonds week be? Well, we got 13 weeks of clubs, right? So yeah. after that. <laughs> I think, yeah, it's, I think it's around June, July. Um, the Ace of Diamonds week comes up. Um, so we've done all the clubs. We'll think of, and try to implement maybe some questions or Q and A type things. Maybe just kind of mm -hmm. switch. Or yeah, because I had some, you know, when I made the post, Rashad, um, like where's the Queen of Hearts for you? You know, I think that might be good. Like we can, like you know. Oh, nice. If your Queen of Hearts is your Saturn card, how does that play out? If the Queen of Hearts is this card, how does that play out? So next week, going into the King of Hearts week, that might be something we can do. You know, I have the King of Hearts is Jupiter. It's you, part of you too. It's part. It's part of all three of us. You know, so those could be different ways of like showing people the energy and different like because for for people like for the Nine of Clubs this week, the Queen of Hearts has been their it's their challenging karma card. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what's interesting about that is it's layered teaching, right? Because like there's yeah. that beautiful foundation that if anybody wants to know more about the cards that Gene has created. And then there's this weekly conversation that we've done that gives you a sense of how the energies per se work and rub on each other, right? Mm -hmm. And now we're going into even more refinement of like where it is in the spread, even where it is in the pure spread and talking about the influence of that card from that place and then where it sits on the live spread, just really talking about the elements and the and this, and those, you know, Mars, Saturn, Venus, that kind of stuff more and those energies, which would include Will too, because he likes that stuff as well. So that sounds like a wise movement, but I'm happy to, to talk more about it as we grow. But I think that sounds wise as a way to digest the whole experience fuller. And there is a set available on Rashad's live thing to look at any week. So if you're going through a week or you hear about a week, go listen to that show. Yep. All good, Rashad? No, we can't hear you, Rashad. I can't either. <laughs> and there he goes. All right. Well, thank you for coming to Rashad and Cards, the card table, and <laughs> guided by the cards and growing with the seasons, um, harmonizing our families. And we'll be back next week with the King of Hearts and where it might fit into your spread or whatever else we come up with. Rashad, you back? I was just doing a closing since you disappeared. Yeah, I can hear. But yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and close out. Um, I don't have anything else. I was just saying that next week we're going to look at where the king is in your spread and understand more about the king's placement and not just the energy of the week so we can go deeper since we have a set created for each week. And if you want to know more, go to one of those shows. But otherwise, we're going to kind of shift it a little bit and see what flows. Yeah, that's fine with me. Um, I'll do a poll. So thank you, J-Lo. I think I see her comment that. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so appreciate it. Yeah, so we can... Um, kind of a Q&A format and if y'all have questions from people or reflections from readings we can just text each other so yeah so that was quick so <laughs> the king of diamonds uh, so witty. well I didn't go into a prayer and stuff you know it's a little over time now but yeah mm -hmm. so but no I said lots of stuff today and I'm gonna just enjoy that I'm doing this and just stay <laughs> like this and I'm not gonna let the world collapse me because of shit that has nothing to do with me and I invite the whole world to do the same mm. you want to see a drop you, you do want to no, no. you love that yes that's funny how the little bit of this laugh I know I know I, I was just people were like looking them up in the class wanting to buy them when I was using it in my teaching of family alchemy it was hilarious and honestly I must have it 15 20 years I just used to tell kids about it in yoga how they had to stand straight or their flower wouldn't grow so very fun I love you guys appreciate it and uh I'll see you soon Yes. Peace, everybody. This was fun. We'll Thank see you, you next week. Yeah, happy week. Enjoy the week. Enjoy the full moon. Yeah. Prayers are up. Bye.